George Soros and Xi Jinping don't see eye to eye. Recently, the 91-year-old Soros wrote three articles in the Wall Street Journal and Financial Times, criticizing Xi and calling him the most dangerous enemy of open societies in the world. China's mouthpiece Global Times fought back, also with three articles, referring to Soros as a global economic terrorist. Hi everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. Overseas Chinese media pointed out that Soros' hostility is not toward the Chinese Communist Party itself, but rather towards Xi Jinping's regime. It seems like Soros is engaged in the CCP's infighting, and he's surely not on Xi Jinping's side. In 2018, Soros attempted to short-sell Hong Kong's currency, and the city was forced to spend about $13 billion to prop up the currency as well as the stock market. Soros was fined $191,000 by the city authorities for practicing illegal naked short-selling. In 2019, he tried to short-sell Hong Kong's stocks during the city's ongoing riots. He wrote an open ad in the Wall Street Journal in October that year, saying that his interest in defeating China goes beyond U.S. national interests. Two years after Xi became the head of the CCP in 2015, he experienced a major stock market crash that many say was orchestrated by Jiang Zemin's faction with the purpose of causing an economic disaster for Xi. Soros was said to have played a part in it. One year after the crash, Forbes magazine mentioned it as a coup d'etat. This coup might have been caused by the Jiang Zemin faction to damage the reputation of President Xi Jinping. This group purportedly maliciously shorted the market. This is the reason why Xi Jinping is the first CCP leader who personally presides over financial meetings, when traditionally these meetings were hosted by the premier. The very reason why he closely guards his capital markets is also the reason why he and Soros fight. The best way to illustrate this is to show you what happened behind the 2015 stock market crash. The market decline started on June 12, 2015, and by July the 9th, the Shanghai stock market has fallen 30%. 1,400 companies, or more than half listed, filed for a trading halt in an attempt to prevent further losses. Chinese stock market values continue to drop despite efforts by the government to rescue the market. On August the 24th, the Shanghai index fell again by over 8%. The impact of the Chinese market crash spread across the world, and the Dow Jones and the London FTSE index also plummeted. One week before the crash, on June the 5th, the Shanghai Stock Exchange Index, or SSE, reached 5,000 points. There was a rumor that the index would rise to a high of 5,361.5 points. What's special about this number? It's Xi Jinping's birthday, June 15, 1953, or 53615. That's his birthday. The rumor also said that Guo Taijun and Securities, one of China's largest investment banks, would be listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange on June the 15th as a birthday wish for Xi, because the Chinese name Guo Taijun literally means nation wealthy and the emperor healthy. However, these rumors were later proven malicious because Guo Tai didn't get listed until June the 26th. And on June the 15th, Xi's birthday, as Chinese stockholders rushed into the market waiting for a new surge, the index took a nosedive for several consecutive days. In the face of the plummeting market, the regime began a rescue effort and launched a large number of administrative measures, including setting up a national rescue team to pump money into the stock market. On July the 4th, 21 securities firms pledged 120 billion yuan and committed to not reducing their holdings of self-operated stocks below 4,500 points. But that didn't have much effect. At the time, it was reported that Premier Li Keqiang called for an investigation of inside thieves in the securities industry. Who are the inside thieves? One of them was Citic Securities, the leading player on the national rescue team. Citic Securities was suspected of shorting the stock market jointly with foreign investors. 
Cidic Securities is China's largest securities firm and is controlled by the second generation of officials and princelings. The vice chairman of Cidic Private Equity Funds Management, a subsidiary of Cidic Securities, is Liu Lefei, the son of Politburo Standing Committee member Liu Yunshan. And Liu Yunshan is a member of the Jiang faction. So let's take a look at Cidic's investment activities before, during, and after the crash. On June the 3rd, nine days before the crash happened, Cidic Private Equity Funds Management seemed to have known that the market would go down and started to reduce long positions and increased short positions in stock index futures. By the way, you hold long positions when you expect market to go up and hold short positions when you expect it to go down. A few days before the crash began, from June the 10th to the 12th, Cidic kept buying short positions. On June the 15th, Xi Jinping's birthday, which is also the day the crash started, Cidic held only short positions and it continued to hold a huge amount of them. However, on July the 8th, which was four days after the National Rescue Team was announced, the market reached the bottom and Cidic suddenly increased over 30,000 long position contracts. It's as if it knew the market had bottomed out. Then on July the 9th, when the stock index started to rebound, Cidic sold the long position contracts. On July 31st, the firm again held only short positions, over 7,000 contracts in total. It made out pretty well when the market crashed again on August the 24th, and the index fell by 8.48%. Media controlled by Jiang's faction also participated in the financial coup. Liu Yunshan, Liu Lefei's father, was at the time in charge of the CCP's propaganda. Three days after the national rescue effort was announced, the state's official mouthpiece, Xinhua News Agency, said in the morning of July the 7th that it's pointless to save the market. This caused the Shanghai and Hong Kong stock markets to fall again, reaching the bottom on the 9th. Financial predators maliciously shorted the stock market and swept away huge amounts of funds. During the market's two and a half month crash, $5 trillion of market value evaporated. Caijing.com reported that the wealth of at least 500,000 to 600,000 middle class people across China was wiped out. Taiwan based China Times blamed the sell off on malicious foreign short sellers, including Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, and George Soros. It is believed that the size of the funds and sophisticated trading strategies were beyond the capabilities of Chinese institutional investors. The timing of the crash was also telling. The day before the market started to go down, June the 11th, was the day that a key member of the Jans faction, Politburo Standing Committee member Zhou Yongkang, was sentenced to life in prison by Xi Jinping. In 2013, before another Jiang faction heavyweight, Politburo Standing Committee member Bo Xilai went on trial for corruption. The Jiang faction planned another market disaster called the August the 16th Ever Bright Incident. At that time, the Chinese stock market soared and plummeted within the same day, causing public panic. In the two years after the 2015 crash, Xi Jinping investigated and removed at least 53 high-level officials in banking, insurance, and regulatory agencies as part of his anti-corruption campaign. Recently, Chinese movie star Zhao Wei, who is very close to Alibaba's Jack Ma, and the Jam faction is in trouble too. Last month, Zhao's movies were completely delisted from entertainment platforms in China, and she is missing in action. Overseas Chinese media Vision Times reported that, according to a well-connected reporter based in Hong Kong, Zhao Wei is a key person in the Jiang Zemin's faction's connection with George Soros. I think by now you know why she and Soros don't see eye to eye, and why Xi Jinping has a mixed feeling about Wall Street. The last thing he wants to see is that Soros and Wall Street join the Jiang Zemin faction and create another financial coup. Stay tuned, please share this video and subscribe. 
The drama is only beginning to unfold. More will come. I recommend these two videos、uh, for you to watch to understand the complex relations Xi Jinping has with capitalists and Wall Street. See you next time.